Welcome to Dan ARG YouTube. Farah Zokwere, they talk about Edo State politics. He they talk about the election we won't happen for Edo State. APC say court don't remove Aswe Igudalu name from people we won't contest for election we won't happen for Edo State. INEC don't release list. You see this list where INEC release so. Don't show, say, na lie. Na APC lie. I swear, Igodalo name and Barristow Sarodio Ogi name. They among the list of people we won't contest for election. We won't happen for those state. You see this list. You see this place. So, we yellow day. Na here. Na I swear, Igodalo name and Barristow Sarodio Ogi name day. Look the list where well, well, you go see their name. Make I leave you, make you hear from Farez Okwere. As they talk about APC lies and propaganda. Enjoy the video. If they say that their candidate knows anything, let him come out and engage us. Let him come out for a debate. Let him come out and tell other people what he has to offer. The candidate is hiding. The APC candidate is hiding. Let him come out. We are ready for their lies. We are ready for their propaganda. Anywhere they carry and pass, we are there. We will wait for them. Anywhere. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, Asha Godaro is your next governor. Go and write it down. So, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're listening from around the world, whatever you are joining me from around the world, whatever time it is where you are. Um, I'm here this evening to discuss some of the, do justice to some of the propaganda and the lies by the APC, you know, and um, we are not surprised that a party who has continued to tell lies, to engage propaganda in the hope of trying to deceive Edo people, you know. But we are here every day to, you know, to do justice to those lies and those propaganda. That's why we are here. We are here every day to, to tell you the facts and how things are and what the true situation of things ah, so that you don't allow the APC to uh, misguide you or to misinform you, you know. That is what they have. That's the only thing that they have for this election. That's the only thing that they have. Lies and propaganda. That's all. They have no other plan. Nothing. Nothing. You know, it's so bad that they don't even have, they don't even have an agenda. There's no agenda. There's no... There's no manifesto, you know. So the only thing that they have to sell to other people is propaganda and lies. And every day we'll be here to do justice to those lies and those propaganda, you know, because we know the truth, we know the facts. And by the truth, we can always set our people free. You know, the first thing they... They've been posting around is that Aswa Godalo is not in the ballot. That's very laughable. <laughs> That's quite laughable. You see, today we posted a lot of evidence. You know, INEC official list. You know, INEC final official list, which has been released on INEC website. I'm going to post the link. I'm going to post the link of that. I'm going to post. I'm going to share the link now. On this, on this video, so that if you are there, you can, you can click on the link and see the from the INEC page, the INEC page. You can see the just a minute. You can see from the INEC page itself. I'm, I'm trying to share the link. Share the link here. Okay, so you can download. It by yourself and see what INEC says and the INEC 
you can see from I'm, I'm just trying to share the link on this video so that you can see by yourself on the comment section you can go to the comment section and you will see <clears throat> you will so see good evening yourself okay i'm just posting okay so i've posted the link to in the comment section i posted the link to to the INEC Nigeria website where you can see a list of the candidates. The, that's the final list of candidates. And if you go to number 13 on that list, you see the name boldly, boldly written there. Aswe Godalo. Very boldly written. You know? So, the lies by the APC, they are frustrated. And let me break it down for you. You know, since they started, since we started this, the race to Sadebe Avenue, all the APC have done is tell lies, you know, and propaganda. First of all, they started with the issue of flood, where their candidate came out, instead of addressing the door people, talking to the people, engaging the people, came out, went to a, a place in, in Boundary Road and said that there was there was flood and that uh, the flood, that his vehicle couldn't pass, now you can't use leg waka pass. That video is everywhere on social media. You can see it was laughable. You know, it was it was it was an embarrassment not only to Opevolo himself but to the APC. You know, and all of that. And after we came out to show that the you know, so show that that particular spot where they made that video, that it's a place where when it rains, water can gather there for a few minutes. You know. And then after that, it, it, it goes away. They were so embarrassed that they didn't do any video on floods again, you know, because they know that Edo people were not being fooled by that. They also understood that their own, um, the, the, the godfather of Okwebolo today, which is Adam Soshomole, you know, expended 30 billion naira for the Bini Water Storm Project, which nothing, they could absolutely show nothing for it, you know, 30 billion naira, which just went down the drain. And so for Okwebolo to come out and be talking about flood was even an embarrassment to them, an embarrassment to the APC. So when the flood issue of the flood team was not flying, then they switched over to the issue of language that Asa Godalo does not speak his language. That is very laughable. In fact, I met someone, one APC leader recently in Urumi. We met in Urumi where we were parked somewhere, we were talking politics, and his son was inside this vehicle. The APC leader's son was seated inside his vehicle. So while we were talking, he was saying that uh, Aswe Godalo does not speak his language. And for that reason, he should, he, he should, not, be, he should not be voted for. <coughs> and then, and then I, when I finished talking to him, I now approached his son. His son is about... 19 years old or 20 or 20 years, excuse me, sorry. His son is about 19 or 20 years old. And then I approached the young man and I and I spoke Isha for him. And I asked him, but yeah, yeah. He's, he, he, he could barely answer Ofure. And then I tried to converse with his son in Ishan language. Oh yeah, but here. I tried to speak Isha for him, and the young man could not even speak Isha. Meanwhile, his father was outside the car, telling me that Aswe Godalo does not speak Isha. So I went back to him, the father outside the car, and I told him, I said, I'm just trying to speak Isha to your son, and your son does not even know how to speak Isha. So does that mean now that your son is not an Esa man anymore, or... Your son is not eligible to run for any political office tomorrow if he has the opportunity to. And the guy became completely mute. He started speaking in Chinese. You know, he was trying to look for an excuse out of it. And that is the hypocrisy of the APC and their members. That is the hypocrisy of what they represent. Imagine somebody telling you that uh, Aswe does not speak, does not speak Esa. And then you ask him, you know, you ask him to, 
you ask him if they are if their own children speak their language, and you find out that those of them who are who are saying that that's why does not speak that's why does not speak uh, the language, they are children. Even many of them do not even speak their languages. So that is that is the that is the level of hypocrisy that these people are currently exhibiting. High level of hypocrisy, you know. High level of of I don't even know how to address how to, how to even say that, but you know it it speaks about the the re the re height of hypocrisy, you know, and that is what they want to engage in because they know that oh the people sometimes they think that those people are gullible and they can just deceive the people. So when they now find out that the issue of the language was not flying, they they slow down. And let me tell you guys, let me tell you, let me let me let's go back to history. Let's go back to history. Let's talk about one of the men who has been arguably one of the best governors in Edo or the defunct Bender State. Ambrose Follow Shali, who was a governor in of Bender State between 1979 to 1983. For those who do not know their history, I know a lot of you listening to me might not have been born then. 1979 to 1983, we had a governor then in the defunct Bender State. His name was Ambrose Fowler Rushaw Ali. Go and goggle him. He was one of the best governors ever in Nigeria. Ambrose followed Rishaw Ali when he was contesting for governor. In the primaries of the, of the party where he contested in, then the primaries where the party where he contested from, the person who he defeated in the primaries of his political party, UNP or something like that, then was Aswe Godalo's father. Aswe Godalo's father from Ehoimi contested the primaries with Ambrose Ali in 1979. Aswe Godalo's father contested the primaries with Ambrose Ali in 1979. And then you come out and say Aswe Godalo is a stranger when his father already contested for governor in 1979. And then that's it. UPN. Thank you, my, my uncle. My, my big boss has just corrected me. UPN. Ambrose Ali and Aswa Godalo's father contested the, 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 the ticket, the primary election of UPN in 1979, where Ambrose Ali emerged. And Ambrose Ali went on to become the governor of Bender State. When Ambrose Ali was campaigning then, they were mocking him. They were saying that Ambrose Ali does not speak Ishan language because Ambrose Ali obviously grew up in Ondo State. He was born in Ondo. He grew up in Ondo State. Ambrose Ali was born in Ondo State and grew up in Ondo State in a war. And then from there, he moved to Asaba. He never lived in the Bender States, as we call it then, until when he came to contest for governor. But then he was very educated. And then Ambrose Ali, who they were all mocking that he doesn't speak his language, he doesn't speak Ishan language. This was in 1979, when many people then were not even speaking English. They were mocking him that Ambrose Ali did not speak his language. And then Ambrose Ali won that election and became one of the best governors that we've ever had. In fact, let me give you, let me give you some figures. In the first year, in the first year of Ambrose Ali's reign as governor, he built over a hundred and something secondary schools in the first one year. Over a hundred and something secondary schools. Of that a hundred and something secondary schools, he built over 40 secondary schools in Oredo local government alone. Established 40 schools in only Oredo local government alone. If you remember that Oredo local government then was almost the size of you know, the whole of Benin that we have, that, that we currently, the Benin metropolitan area that we have it today. And then, and then, you know, built 16 schools, you know, 16 schools in, in, um, in um, 
the Yoruba Pueblo local government, you know, built like that in, in Agbazilo, built 35 schools in Orion local government. Because then the Orion local government made up of Orion one home there and some other areas. You know, that was in the defunct Bender states. And then in other places, in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia local government, he built over 40 schools as well. And in Amusali's four years of governance, Amusali established over 600 secondary schools, two universities, three polytechnics, Amusali University, Delta State, the, what you call the Delta State University, Abraka today, was also built by Amusali. The, 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 um, um, the Polytechnic in Ozora was also built by Amrosali. So, Amrosali did all that, despite the fact that people were saying that he didn't speak his language. They were calling him a stranger. They were calling him a stranger. Today, the same people who are calling Aswe Godal, who come out and say Aswe Godal is a stranger, ask them who was their father's name. Ask them how many of them their children speak their language. Ask them. Ask them how many of them their children speak their language. They cannot tell you. If Ambrosali's father was able to contest for governor of Bender State in 1979, how dare you say the man, his son, is a stranger? How dare you say his son was his son is a stranger? So when they brought the issue of flood, he didn't fly. They threw it away. They moved from flood issues, then they moved to language, and the language issue did not fly. Today, Aswe Godalo is trending everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And then they moved to the issue of court cases, and that is the latest for them. Lying and propaganda with all kind of lies and propaganda on different uh, cases that they said they, are, they have in court. Ask them to show you evidence of those cases. They cannot show you. Even their own leader, the chief propagandist of the APC today, Adam Soshomole, was asked on a national TV, was asked to make reference to the particular case he was talking about where he said that he was disqualified. He couldn't, he couldn't answer that question. He said he, he doesn't know. So he didn't know the case where he was saying that Aswe Goda was disqualified, but then he was quick to say that Aswe Goda was disqualified. Another propaganda. And then to, to do justice to that propaganda, let me let me quickly show you the same the same court case, you know, the same court case, the court of appeal case, where they have been citing without even seeing the this thing. You see it? I don't know if you can see. Let me try and dim my light a little bit so you can see. You see it? This is. This is the court case. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it out. This is a certified two copy of the court case. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read it out. This is a certified two copy. This is page one. This is page one. This is page two. And this is the final page of the of the ruling. So I'm going to read a little bit before I will post these same pictures on the comment section so that you can download it and read for yourself and don't be deceived by anybody. It says, in the High Court of Appeal in the Abuja Division holding in, at Abuja on Monday, the 22nd day of July, on Monday, the 22nd day of July, 2024, is a case be between Right Honorable Philip Shaibu as the appellant. Philip Shaibu was the one who went to the Court of Appeal. Not as well, go down. Look at it. It's here. I want to post it. I want to post it in the comment section so that you can download it for yourself and see. Filishaibu was the one who went to, you see it, it was Filishaibu who went to, let me zoom into it, you see, so you can see it, see it. Filishaibu, you see it, right? Honorable Philip Shaibu was the one who went to the Court of Appeal, not Aswe Godalo. You see it? So, number one, right? Honorable Philip Shaibu as appellant, as appellant in that case, and Independent National Electoral Commission, People's Democratic Party, PDP, Chief Dan Obi, Chairman South South PDP Zone, then Asurime Igodalo as respondent in the case. Then the judgment delivered by Abubakar Muazu Lamido, JCA, 
This is an appeal against the decision of the Federal High Court, Abuja Judicial Division, delivered on the 27th day of May 2024 by Comrade J.K. Omotosho. The appellant as plaintiff commenced the proceedings by the way of originating summons against the respondent seeking for the determination of the following questions. Okay. Now, let me go to page two. My learned brother, Abubakar Muazu Lamido Jesse, did oblige me in draft from his leading judgment just delivered on Persia 1. I agree with his lordship reasoning and conclusion that the appeal lacks merit. I'm going to put it there so you can read it by yourself. That the appeal lacks merit and ought to be dismissed. A great deal has been written by this court as well as the APS court on the provisions of section 84, subsection 14 of the Electoral Act 2022, as it relates to invocation of the jurisdiction of the court. This is as it relates to the jurisdiction of the court in a matter of nomination of a candidate of a political party to contest a general election. In the, in the circumstances, it is no doubt now that it is settled law that only an aspirant who took part in the primary election for the nomination of a party's candidate for the particular election has the local standing to approach the court for reliefs against the results or conduct of the said election. This means that any person who did not participate in the said primary election as an aspirant lacks the local standing to approach the court to challenge the result of the said election. See PDP versus Sevier, 2012, National Working Committee, Daniel versus INEC, 2015, and PDP versus Anon Lawal, 2022. In the instant case, it is not in dispute that the appellant did not participate in the primary election, but resulted in the nomination of the fourth respondent. In this, in the instant case, it is not in dispute that the appellant did not participate in the primary election that resulted in the nomination of the fourth respondent as the governorship candidate of the PDP for the Edo State governorship election scheduled for the 21st of September 2024. This being the situation, it is very clear that the appellant, the appellant, which is Philly Shaibu, the appellant, the appellant, this being the situation, it is very clear that the appellant lacks the local standing to contest the result of the said primaries election in any court of law, in any court, not just in the high court. What the judge is saying, what the appeal court has said is that Filishaibu lacks the local standing to, to approach the court, any court, not just the AP court, any court. Let me finish reading. Hold on, though. I'm reading from the court judgment, the court judgment from the AP court. That's where I'm reading from. I'm going to post it on the comment section. So those who don't have it, so you can download it there. Local standing to contest the result of the self primary election in any court of the law, and neither would the court have the rest required jurisdiction to entertain his complaints against the said primary election. It is for the above reason, listen, 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 guys, it is for the above reason and those contained in the leading judgment that I, too, find merit, find no merit, find no merit whatsoever in this appeal, and I consequently dismiss same. I abide by the consequential orders contained in the said leading judgment, including the order as to cost, which means Filishaibu was also fined. Appeal is hereby dismissed. The judgment of the lower court is accordingly affirmed. This is it, stamped, stamped. You see it? Stamped from the appeal court. Filishaibu lost at the appeal court. But what the APC people came out to do is come on social media and tell lies. Even their own 
uh, Adam Soshomole was leading the lies. Was leading the lies. I'm posting. I'm posting the the court uh, judgment papers on the comment section, guys. Just go ahead and I don't know if I can post. I don't think I can post a picture on the comment section. No, I don't think I can post a picture. Okay, so I cannot post a picture on the comment section. I cannot post a picture on the comment section. So what I will do is that after this video, I will post that. I will post that. Um, I will post the the the, the appeal judgment again on my Facebook page. You know, I will post it on my Facebook page so that you can follow and you can see the and read the judgment for yourself. For yourself. Don't let them fool you. So you see the issue of the court cases. There is no court case anywhere against Aswe Godalo that is stopping Aswe Godalo. Oshomole is a known propagandist and a liar. Ask him to provide evidence. Just ask them, okay, you said that Aswe Godalo was disqualified. Show us an evidence of a court case where it was written by the court that Aswe Godalo has been disqualified. Tell them to show you, and they will have nothing to show you. Just ask them to show you, and then they will run away. Because they have nothing, nothing to show you. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Now, finally, you saw what they did recently. You know, in their own desperation, in their own desperation, they went to a place where Nigerians were protesting bad governance. Nigerians were, were busy protesting, you know, the, the, the failure of the APC administration. They were protesting for hunger and starvation, you know, that Nigerians are still on the street today protesting against hunger in 2024, you know, and instead of the APC to be ashamed of themselves, you know, for inflicting so much pains on Nigerians. They were busy trying to make propaganda in Edo. They went to a place, they carried some corn, maize. They stuffed it in 50 kg bags, took it to a school, a Muslim school, somewhere around Enya, Aziz, loaded the corn in the room, went back, got some Hausa boys, asked them to go to the place and start carrying the corn. And the moment those guys were carrying the corn, one of the guys who were contracted by the APC to shoot that video came out and said, oh, look at, they busted rice. They busted where Governor Basaki kept rice. Oh, they are carrying rice. And then they shot the video and then they threw it out there on social media and they are all their online propagandists were out there in a hurry to start spreading the lies. They were out there spreading the lies. And then it took our doggedness to go and look for that place, to uncover that video, to uncover the location. Because we will never stop. We will never stop until we, we complete, completely demolish every structure of APC propaganda in the door. And that was how we went, look for that very location in the video. We searched for it in, in Benin. We found the place, and we found that it was, it was a place at N9. On arriving there, some of the people approached us and said ah, that they didn't know that that was the video they wanted to do, that they had actually contacted them yesterday, and they gave them 1,000 Naira to come and be carrying the bags. While they were carrying the bags, that was when they now, the guy now came and made that video. And the guy claimed it was the house of a PDP leader. Not knowing that the truth will always come out. And when we went there to look at it, it was a school, a Muslim school, a Muslim school. And there was no house of any PDP leader anywhere. So you see it, that sometimes, even before the truth we wear the issue, lies have traveled very far. But the good thing is that the truth will always catch up with the lies and overtake the lies. And that's what we've been doing. The APC in Edo right now, ask them to bring out their candidates. Ask them to, their candidates should come out and engage Edo people. 
He cannot. He cannot. He cannot. Two months ago, the Nigerian Medical Association invited all the candidates and said, come, we want to hear from you. Let's hear your vision for the medical field. Let's hear your agenda for the medical field. Aswe Godalo was the first person to go there. He engaged the doctors, engaged the nurses. They asked questions. He answered their questions. He engaged with them. He sold his vision for the medical field to them. His plans, what he wants to do if he becomes governor of Edo State and when he becomes governor, how he will improve the medical medical care for Edo people, how he will improve uh, health care for Edo people, how he will he better the lives of medical doctors, how he will make sure that he improves the welfare of medical doctors so that they will stop Jack Barry and they will remain here to work. He laid it out and also told them that how we provide security for every medical personnel so that even when a medical doctor is called upon by 2 a.m., he can go to the hospital and, and, and save a life. That he was going to provide security for all of them. He said it. Also said that he was going to make sure that in those government hospitals, he was going to build the, the doctor's quarters, befitting places just by the hospital so that they don't have to travel far. So if you're a doctor and you are serving in any hospital, you should be living in a place where you can walk from your, your place of work to your house so that you, you don't have to travel very far to go and attend to people who are in emergencies. He came to that place. He sold his vision to the medical uh, uh, practitioners there. And then the, 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 the labor candidate also came there. I don't know what he said when he got there, but he also, he also came. And the only person who refused to come was the APC candidate. Instead, he, he tried to send the deputy to go and represent him. And then the medical practitioners, the medical doctors, all of them refused and said no, that they will not allow the deputy to come, that they want to hear from Mondeo Pueblo himself. And that was how Mondeo Pueblo fled. He, ne he never came back. That was number one. Number two, number two, in BIU, Ben Sindasa University, everybody knows Ben Sindasa University. It's a famous university in the Edo State. You know? Famous university. They invited all the candidates to come and engage them. Come and say your vision. They had a platform where people would come and talk about their vision for Edo. The PDP candidate was invited. The APC candidate was invited. The Labour candidate was invited. Aswe Godalo was the first to come there. There were over 1,500 um, students in that hall. You can go to my Facebook page and scroll back to that video. The video is in my Facebook page. I posted it. I did a live video from the event that day. Over 1,500 students were gathered in that hall. Asa Gadalo came and engaged the students. They asked questions. They ask what is his vision for Edo, what he will do better if he becomes governor, how we improve the lives of young people, how we improve the life of students, how we, we improve you know, the life of everybody in Edo. And he was happy to engage them. And then that of the Labour Party also went there and engaged them. But the only person who did not go there was the APC candidate. The APC candidate. Just recently, just recently again, just recently, a famous Edo body, very known, very, very popular, very, you know, um, how do I call it? You know, very well known Benin social cultural organization. They invited all the candidates to come and engage them. I don't want to hear from the candidates. This was it two days ago. This was it. You can see, you can see Aswe Godalo seated here. You can see Olumide seated here. But if you see in the banner, all three candidates were there. And the organizers of this event said all three candidates were invited a long time ago. The invitation was given to them a long time ago. Asha Godalo was there, spoke eloquently well of himself, and his vision for Edo sold it very well. 
the only person who did not come there, as usual, was the APC candidate. And, and instead of some of the APC members, they need to be ashamed of themselves, ashamed of the caliber of candidate they presented. They are out there helping to spread lies and propaganda. If I was a member, if I was a member of the APC, I would not support Mondeo Pueblo. Openly, I would not. We've gone beyond the stage where the party can just bring, a party can just bring out anybody for the sake of presenting anybody. If I was a member, if I was a member of that political party, I would not support Mondeo Pueblo. And I have no apology for that. No, I don't think he has what it takes to lead our states. And for that reason, I will make it clear. And on that note, I would like to appreciate the courageous ones, you know, who have taken the bold step to say, no, 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 no. The APC have made a terrible mistake in presenting a candidate that does not know the difference between a zoo and a museum. So for that reason, I'm not going to support. It takes courage and it takes boldness to come out and say, Yes, I'm not going to support Monday Pueblo. I must appreciate those who have done that. Particularly the likes of Gaddafi. You know? And so many of them who have come out to say, this is a mistake and I don't want to be part of that mistake. Okpebolo does not have the intellectual capacity to engage other people. He cannot even, he won't be able to read memos. The only reason why he's running for this office is because some cabas think that it will be easy for them to use. Because they always like somebody that does not know anything. So that it is easy for them to manipulate and easy for them to squeeze. They don't like tough men as governors. Kabas, they don't like it. That's why when you see godfathers try to present candidates, no godfather always wants to present a good candidate. They want to bring a candidate that would outsmart them. Because they believe that that the worst person would not have the courage to rise up against them. Go and look at everywhere. That's what they do. That's what they do. Now look at Asselon. He has what it takes to move Edo forward. He has what it takes to move Edo forward. Bold and courageous will be able to make bold decisions for the state. That's the kind of person we should be looking at. We can look beyond, we must not, we must not look beyond antecedents. Look at all the candidates, what are their political antecedents? Particularly that of the APC. You, you say you are supporting the APC, you cannot even say where the man worked before. A few days ago, we got hold of the certified copies of the documents submitted to INEC by Edmond Pueblo. And when you look at it, you'll be embarrassed. From the work results to the uh, NECO results to the um, uh, information that I put, you will be embarrassed, completely embarrassed, to say this kind of person should not even have any business contesting for governor. Even the phone, when he was asked where he worked, he put nil, nil. That means he was even telling, saying to Aynek that he has never worked. He has never worked. It's there. Aynek publishes all the information of all the candidates. You can go to Aynek's office. It's published there. You can go and get it. I'm going to see Asso Godalo's profile. 
Go and check Aswe Godalo's history. And you see that the difference is clear. Obviously clear. Very, very clear. And we cannot afford to go backwards. Edo cannot afford to go backwards. No way. We cannot afford to go backwards. We must continue to go forward. Nobody is happy with the condition that Nigeria has, uh, that APC has thrown Nigeria into today. Nobody is happy with it. Nobody. Just yesterday, I tried to go and get petrol. Fuel was scarce, couldn't get. Finally got a place to buy and the petrol was 940 naira a liter. Guys, the petrol I bought yesterday was 940 naira a liter in a filling station in Nigeria. In Nigeria. People are hungry. Can't get petrol. And the APC, instead of being ashamed, instead of going around apologizing to Edo people, you know, for presenting or inflicting so much pains on Nigerians, so much suffering on Nigerians, they are out there presenting a candidate that does not know the difference between the zoo and the museum and trying to sell the candidate through the back door with lies and propaganda. They are so ashamed of that candidate, they can't even come out to campaign for him. Because they don't even know how a dope will receive them. When we now said that the APC is not campaigning, that they have nothing to tell those people, they now went ahead and, as we speak right now, the APC, they are mobilizing people from Kogi states, from neighboring states, to come and attend a central rally. We have evidence of people who have been giving money to go and help them get buses, to go and bring people all the way from Kogi state and other neighboring states to attend their central rally in the Do South. That's how bad things are for the APC. No reasonable person, I repeat, no reasonable person who is reasonable who ever support a party that presented a candidate does not, that does not know the difference between a zoo and a museum. No reasonable person. And for that reason, this is why we all, you know, we hold it a responsibility for all of us. All of us. Whether you're from Edo South, whether you're from Edo Central, whether you're from Edo North, all of us must speak up. All of us must stand up and say no. No to a proxy candidate. No to a candidate that is being sponsored by godfathers. No. If they say that their candidate knows anything, let him come out and engage us. Let him come out for a debate. Let him come out and tell other people what he has to offer. The candidate is hiding. The APC candidate is hiding. Let him come out. We are ready for their lies. We are ready for their propaganda. Anywhere they carry a pass, we are there. We will wait for them. Anywhere. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, Aswa Godalo is your next governor. Go and write it down. And you will see a transformation in the door. You will see it. History is about to repeat itself. The same way they mocked Ambrus Ali and said, well, Ali does not speak his language. That's the same way they are mocking Aswa Godalo today. But go to the records. Amos Ali still remains one of the best governors in the history of a, of a, a dual and delta state together, the defunct Bender state. And history is about to, to, to repeat itself. They are lying today that say, oh, Asa Godalo has a Yoruba name. So was Amos Ali. Amos Ali had a Yoruba name also. He had a Yoruba middle name. Ambrose 
follow Rusho Ali. Is follow Rusho Ali Ishan him? No. But go and check the records. And Bruce Ali and Bruce follow Rusho Ali is one of the best governors that ever ruled this space. What he what he did then is still hard for anybody to to beat that record. And when I say history is about to repeat itself, exactly what transpired when Ambusali was contesting in 1979. That is what the same people are putting up today. All kind of propaganda against him. All kind of lies against him. All kind of trying to stop him by the courts. If you say you can win Asa Gudalo, why are you why are you looking why are you instigating so many useless court cases against him? Why you are instituting so many useless court cases against him? Why, if you believe that you can defeat him at the polls? Because what they know is that Asa Gudalo is too popular right now. He's too on ground, and they think that the only way they can stop him is to get him off the ballot. Far, 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 foul. Far, 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 foul. The only way they think they can stop Asa is to get him off the ballot. Because they know that if they go to the field today, Asa will win them in 17 local governments out of 18. They know it. They know. He will even win them in Mondeo own local government. That's how popular he is. That's why they are so desperate they are so desperate to see that Asa Gudalo does not contest the election. Trying all kind of lies. But INEC has come out and published the list of the list, official and final list of those who will be contesting the elections next month. And if you go to that list, I have posted the link on this on this video. If you go to the comment section, I have posted the link there. And you see there that Asa Gudalo's name is boldly written, boldly, number 13. Is unstoppable. Unstoppable. Nobody can stop an idea whose time have come. Nobody. No army. No police. No propaganda can stop an idea whose time have come. And the time that has come is Aswe Godalo's time. Aswe Godalo's time. So disregard all their lies. Disregard all their propaganda. Aswe Godalo is in the ballot. Aswe Godalo will be in the ballot on the 21st of September 2024. Come out for him. Vote for him. Mobilize your friends to come out and vote. Not just vote for him. Mobilize your friends to vote also. Mobilize your friends to vote. Show your love for Aswe Godalo. Even if you are in the diaspora, call your family at home. Call your friends. Encourage them to go out there to the field and vote for Aswe Godalo. That way, we'll be making a bold statement against the APC and against the, the maladministration of the APC and the suffering that they've inflicted on Nigerians. That is the only way we can, we can move, make a, a bold statement against it. And I encourage you all to do it. I encourage you all to be part of this journey. A journey that will take Edo State to the next level. A journey to move Edo State forward and not backward. I want to thank you all for your time. And thank you for coming on my page to watch this video. Please click on the share button and let other people see the video. Give them the opportunity to see the video so that they can you know, also get some information. The video is informative, you know. And we'll be live in America from this page, transmitting every movement of Aswe Gudalo in America from this page. You know, he will be having an engagement with Nigerians in America. If you are unable to, you know, hook up, just come to this page. You will see it live. You will watch the event live on this page. Stay tuned. So if you don't like the page already, like it, share it, so other people get to see it. And I'll be back here again to correct any more lies. Stay tuned because I'm going to post the, stay tuned on my page because I'm going to post the court case. I'm going to post the court case. In fact, I'm doing it right away. I'm posting the court case, um, um, a P court case ruling that Filipe had gone to court that was dismissed. I'm posting it on my page. 
you can go on my Facebook page right now and download it. I'm just posting it right now. So if you are, you can go to my Facebook page and download it for yourself and see it. And you see, you will see that the liar, as we all know, is the party that have no vision and no mission and have no plans. I'm posting, if you see it now, I'm posting it on my page. So I'm posting it on my page. So if you go to my page now, my, my Facebook page, you are, you can download the judgment. And please don't just download, read it. It's a very, we only highlighted the three, first three page where they talked about the, where the ruling was made. Just read the ruling and you will see that Felicia Ibu's case was dismissed and keep it in your archive so that when Oshomole and the rest of them come out to lie again, tell them to show you evidence of their own case where they said Aswe Vidalo was dismissed. Where they said Aswe Vidalo was dismissed, tell them to show you. So I'm just posting it now. Please go there. Go there and get it from that place, you know, and read for yourself. The facts are very clear and obvious. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Now we don't hear from Fares Okwere. The message we bring come. Let us know what you think for comment session. If you never subscribe to Dan ARG YouTube, try make you subscribe. So that make you for the year all the things where they happen for Nigeria. Make I leave you with this video. Make you help or share them. Thank you for watching Dan ARG YouTube.